raindrops Ooh, I can't take my eyes off of it Moving so phenomenally More like the way we rock it So don't stop It's under the lights When everything goes Nowhere to hide When I'm getting too close When we move Well, you already know So just imagine Just imagine It's in the air, it's in my blood, it's rushing on I don't need no reason, don't be control I fly so high, no ceiling when I'm in my zone Cause I got that sunshine in my pocket Got that good soul in my feet I feel that hot blood in my body When it drops, ooh I can't take my eyes off of it Moving so phenomenally Come on, back the way we rock it So don't stop that Under the lights when everything goes Nowhere to hide when I'm getting too close When we move, well, you already know So just imagine Jaren, I can't hear you if you are there, if you can uh, unmute yourself. Let I'm me here, coach. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, well, awesome, man. Hey, my apologies for, for taking a little bit of time there, but man, I appreciate your patience. Um, and also, I appreciate your due, due diligence, man, to continue to, you know, uh, keep working this thing here to you know, becoming greater and better and adding additional tools to your, your tool belt, to your toolbox. So you have an opportunity here that you want to go through, you, you want to go over, uh, I guess, can you tell me a little bit, I can remember a little bit about it, but can you uh, share a little bit more information about what the actual opportunity is right now? So the opportunity that we have right now is, um, I have a young lady that is going through pre-foreclosure and okay. she's talking about giving the property to the bank. So she doesn't want anything to do with the property, the property is vacant, um so she reached out to me she gave me all the information and i told her you know let's see what we can do okay great so this young lady here the house is going through a pre-foreclosure state is that right right okay no longer wants the property and now you want to take ownership of the property then once you get ownership of the property what's your actual exit strategy from there um you know rent it out fix and flip um, you know, things like that, or even wholesale, just depend on, you know, the numbers and everything. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Excellent. So the seller, she's already agreed to walk away from the home that she doesn't want the property anymore. Correct. Okay. Got it. Okay. So you want the property under contract. And, um, so it's a couple of things here that, that I would say is one, when you put the property under contract, you want the ability to, uh, to do an actual uh, subject to transaction. 
And mm-hmm. you also want the ability to assign the contract to uh, another buyer. Is that right? Okay. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's what I would suggest. So so with the subject to, uh, you know, on the transaction side is that's, you know, giving you uh, the ability to take ownership in that way, which means that the uh, deed of the property will transition over to you and you will become the new owner. But the debt on the property of the balance on the mortgage that's owed would stay and remain in her name. Okay, right. so you get the ownership um, and she gets relieved of, you know, making that monthly payment. So for you is you're not assuming the loan, but you have a, you, you know, a commitment to actually pay the debt on that property. All right. So if you do this and you go all the way through with the transaction, just know that, hey, you're committing to this young lady, to this lady that, hey, you're going to service this debt until it's paid in full. All right? So how it's paid in full is yet to be determined because you're not sure yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So, all right. So you want to go through an actual uh, subject to uh, contract. Is that right today? Correct. Okay, cool. So what I will do here is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share with you the contract that I actually use, okay? And how mm-hmm. I fill it out. And so, and from there, you know, you're able to go in and, and, you know, tweak it to where it fits you. The only thing that really needs to be tweaked is, you know, the payoff amount, all right? Mm-hmm. I'll show you what I put in place uh, when it comes to the payoff amount uh, if you're doing a subject too. Or in this case here, anytime a seller just wants to move to walk away, right? So if they say, hey, look, I want to walk away. Very first thing you want to do is get it under contract. And uh, especially if they say that they're not looking to make any money or if they're looking to make, you know, a little bit of money, you're able to negotiate those terms and get it on paper. And I'll show you how. So let me share with you my screen here. And again, this is the, the the purchase contract that I actually use whenever I do, um, you know, general purchases, uh, whenever I do uh, subject to purchases, you know, it, it doesn't matter. This is one of my go-to contracts here. So let me share my screen here. All right, let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, perfect. Let me move this here out of the way. That's in a way there. All right. And let me blow this up a little bit. My getting old, man. Eyesight is not as good as he once was. <laughs> All right. So, so you take a look here. Uh, and forgive me, I'm looking up because I have three screens here. And so that screen is not directly in front of me. But you know what? Yeah, let me do that here. Let, let me let me move that to where it's directly in front of me because I want to look. I want to be looking up the whole time. I want to be able to look, look uh, directly at you. So let's do that here. All right, I'm getting things set up. Appreciate your patience. All right, now let's go and do that. Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, great, great, great. And now I'm looking directly at you versus looking up to the right or to the left. So, all right, so... And I'll email you. Well, actually, this contract is located in our Google Drive already. It's located there under contracts. And you'll see, I think it's uh, tagged as sub two. Um, so you just simply download it and it's blank. And so you'll be able to go in and, you know, add your, your content information here. So a lot of this information is going to be very standard. So we'll be able to fly through that very quickly. And whenever we get to other, you know, certain details, then we'll have to, you know, uh, go a little bit more in detail, be a little bit more thorough. So you have the seller here. I just put Billy Bob has the seller address. So in this case here, sometimes the sellers don't always live in the property. So if they don't live in the property, this is where, you know, you would put their current address at. And title would you, you know confirm and verify all this information. All right. You have buyer here, you have me, I put Coach Joe. If it's you, you would actually list your LLC. All right. So whenever I do mine, I list them in my LLC. I don't list them as actually uh, you know, my name, LLC. Uh, address of the buyer. What you would like to do there is you would, you know, you don't want to list your personal address. Whatever you do, don't list your personal address, list, list your company address. 
Um, you don't want the seller, you know, because the seller. Hey, go just on the own. Oh, go ahead. Hey, uh, you're starting to mess up a little bit. Your Wi-Fi connection. Oh, it is. Hold on, man. Let me do this here. All right, is this a little better? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're freezing a little bit. Ah, do you think it's me? Yeah, that's better. All right. Um, you're at uh, addressing the seller. Yeah, yeah. So let me turn off my my, my volume here too. So yeah, when it comes to the address of the seller, sometimes the, the seller does not live in the actual property. So you would just put their address here, you know, the address where they live. Um, and then when you go down to the buyer's address, what you want to do there is just don't list your personal address, right? You can leave this section blank, or if you choose to, you know, disclose your business address and not your personal. All right. And you want to do that. You, you don't want the seller, uh, you know, you don't want the seller showing up at your doorstep. Hey, you didn't close on this day, you know. Uh, so, you know, you want to try to, you know, add a little bit of um, uh, discretion in there if possible. So and I know you have a company's address because you're part of our mentee uh, program. So I know you have that. Um, and as you, you know, continue to scroll down. You're going to see here, like you, you'll see like the sell, so, some seller acknowledgements here. Seller agrees to sell and the buyer agrees to buy, right? That's, it, it's a general um, uh, contract. It's not all the, you know, bells and whistles as the, the, the agents, uh, the realtors would actually use, all right? And it doesn't have to be, especially whenever you're, you know, um, buying it as is and you want to get a very quick transaction. So uh, here, whenever you get down here, like things included in the sale. So it, you, this here is really good because you wanna make sure that, you know, um, that you'll see here, the real property shall include all items permanently attached to the property, okay? So you don't want to put the property on the contract and you go get ready to go close and all the doors are gone, the windows are gone, uh, you know, the kitchen <laughs> is gone. Have you seen that movie Moving with uh, Richard Pryor? Mm, I haven't seen that one. Oh, man, it's a classic. It's a classic. So if you get a chance, watch that movie Moving and mm -hmm. everything I just shared with you, you'll see. Like uh, Richard Pryor and his family purchased the property. Man, the guys, they they took the staircase out. They took, I mean, they took the swimming pool out. I mean, it was like, it, it was a very hilarious movie. Um so but very hilarious man so so that's there you know just for uh you know some additional level of protection um hey who knows they could have like put a brand new ac unit in there and they decided that hey you know what hey we actually want to take this ac unit and keep it right and it, so here it just says hey you know uh everything that's permanently attached needs to stay to the property all right uh, if you look here, there is no leased personal property except. So if they have anything that's, uh, uh oh, went too fast. If they have anything that's actually leased uh, at the property, uh, they should let you know. And things that are leased could be uh, a refrigerator, could be some appliances, things like that. Uh, if it's uh, leased, you want to know because uh, those things should actually uh, leave with them. Or if they choose to uh, let them remain, you need to know that, uh, you know, hey, you're going to be responsible for that debt or not, right? So you want to know that. So, so that's here. Then if you continue to go down, you have a uh, purchase price. So here's where, you know, what I do with, with the purchase price. So if I have, especially if I'm doing a subject to if it's not a subject to, I put in the agreed upon purchase price. If it's a subject to, you're not sure what that's going to be because you have to request an actual payoff amount, right? And so they could say, hey, I only owe $50,000, um, you know, and you put it under contract for $50,000, and then it comes to find out that, you know, with some fees and, and, and things like that, it ends up being $53,000. So you have to adjust it. So... 
Uh, with subject two, you just, I just personally put mortgage payoff. Okay, so no matter what that price is, hey, I'm agreeing to you know a mortgage payoff, right? Um, if it's let's say if they say, hey, I would like um, two thousand dollars, you know, above the mortgage. In this case here, I would do mortgage payoff, and then I would come in here, and then I would put plus, you know, uh, two thousand dollars. And that's for them to pocket for themselves. Yep. yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, so that I would do something like that if, um, you, you know, if that's what you know what we're working towards. If that's what we're, you know, what the agreement is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I would do that. Uh, mortgage payoff plus two thousand. Mortgage payoff plus five thousand. Whatever you're able to uh, come to terms with with the seller. Just go in there, you add it in there. And this helps title because if you just say mortgage payoff uh, title, they'll draft it up just as that. Uh, but if you know, hey, I'm going to give them more, you know, 2000 plus that, the title will update it on your actual um, HUD statement, your settlement statement. Okay. And I actually have one of those to where I closed a subject to transaction with this contract here and I didn't give the seller anything so because they didn't want anything they were going through a divorce the husband didn't want the wife to have anything the wife didn't want to have the husband have anything and <laughs> then here's the thing condition of the house wanted both of them out and somebody like me to take it over because the house was trashed oh my gosh it was trashed oh, but, I thought you about the one you just posted I said the house was nice uh, you, you know what? Uh, which you, which you, house did you see? The one with the um, with the little guest suite in the back. Okay, so no, it wasn't that property. It uh, wasn't that property there. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it was, man. And that was another subject to transaction <laughs> with the exact same document here. Um, exact same document. So, and, and you'll you'll notice and find that majority of your sub twos that that you're going to get like let's say if you did like some um deep dive looking for leads you can get a lot of those your your biggest lead pool pool is going to come from divorcee divorces biggest lead pool um yeah the biggest lead pool so people that get divorced so if they get divorced Typically, you know, they'll have a divorce decree that states, you know, who gets the house, what has to happen to the house. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, and, and just speaking to, to the sellers, you know, a lot of times they want to be done with it because of the memories, uh, because yeah. of the sentimental values. They want to be done with it. So uh, you'll be able to, you know, say, hey, look, I want to acquire the property for what you owe on it. And a lot of times though, the sellers, they're willing to just walk away. They're, they are. So, okay, so we got the purchase price, mortgage payoff. In this example, I put plus 2000, but you're always able to, you know, you're able to go in and adjust it however you would like. But I like to just say at least a mortgage payoff. When sellers are looking to walk away, they feel comfortable seeing that mortgage payoff, okay? So then you have initial deposit, hey, you, you know, you could do $1, you could do $10. You know, um, I would try to do it $10 or less. Um, so that's what I would try to do. Uh, most of the time, like I said, the sellers, that they just want to be done. And with you putting down a deposit, that's just, you know, showing that, you know, some type of good faith. You don't have to put down a deposit. Many of my transactions, I don't put down deposits. You know, I don't. Um, some, I will. It is not a requirement that you put down a deposit um, to, you know, purchase or acquire property. Okay, so just if you decide to, you know, ten dollars is, you know, it's that should be suffice, especially if they want to just walk away. All right, so man, my mouse keeps going a little fast here. So let's see here. All right, so you have the balance due at closing, mortgage payoff, because that's what's due at closing. All right. Um, here, if it's going to be subject to first deed of trust balance. All right. So you would put the lender name there. You put the loan number. Okay. You can leave this blank here. 
title company will verify all of those things. Um, some areas they have title companies, some areas they just have attorneys. So either the title company or the attorney will, will verify and confirm all of this, all right? When you're looking at interest rates, fixed rates, adjustable, all these things here, they're good to know if you know this information. If you don't know this information, you don't have to, uh, it, it's not a big deal, okay? It's not a big deal. You want to find it out, but for the sakes of getting the property under contract, you don't have to have that information up front, all right? And so here is if they have one lien on there, but they have two liens on there. So uh, sometimes you could have uh, uh, people that own properties, they have two mortgages on their home is very common. So if they do, you want to be assuming, well, you don't want to assume, but you want to uh, execute this transaction with both uh, mortgage companies information on here. Okay. All right. So here, total pi uh, price to be paid must equal purchase price. So here, mortgage payoff plus, you know, anything additional that you're going to give the seller. All right. Then you have the initials here. All right. Sounds good. So yeah. Any questions about that information there so far? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. Like I said, a lot of it is is pretty straightforward. You know. Um, yeah. Pretty straightforward. So here. You know, your deposits, like I said, you know, if you decide to put down a deposit, I would try to do, you know, um, $10 or less, uh, especially if the seller just wants to walk away. So uh, I would do that. So it just talks about the deposit, your EMD, your earnest money deposit. All right. Where it goes, um, how long you have to actually turn it in and what happens to it. OK, so uh, escrow account. What I like about this one here says like seller shall assign to buyer at no cost to buyer seller's escrow account and property hazard insurance policy. This is important here. And are any refunds which lender may issue. It's possible they issue uh, refunds. I received a refund maybe two years ago and for about $230 for um, I actually overpaid on my mortgage. Um, so lenders may issue uh, refunds. In that case, hey, look, you want to get that refund because now you're, you, you know, you're the owner of the property. Um, so that may come in the line of all taxes, association fees, monthly hazard insurance premiums, uh, mortgage insurance premiums, anything like that. All of that, what that's saying is that that belongs to you now. That belongs to you as the buyer. Okay. Okay. Yes, like I said, it's. it's that's something that you really want to know there. Um, sometimes you may say, you know, $250, keep it. You know, I'm not, not worried about it. But, you know, if you don't say it, you want to know that you legally and rightfully have a claim to those funds, right? Um, that's condition of the process. You know, just remember that, you know, it is an as is, you, you know, um, purchase. But here, you know, it's just going to state that from the time that the agreement was signed, that the property should be in um, better or same condition as when the agreement was signed, okay? So you have an uh, inspection contingency. So uh, what you do once it's signed, you actually put in here, you know, uh, when your inspection period ends, all right? Then you initial there. You got your statement regarding lead-based paint. All right, you got your occupancy possession. Uh, so this is, hey, you know, once you close on this deal, you should be receiving keys to the property and you expect to you know, uh, take full possession of the home at that time, right? So uh, in the event that you know, there will be a lease back, so let's say if the seller lives in the property, but the seller needs the funds from the actual um, um, from the sale of the property. The seller needs the funds to you know transition out. You will put their you know uh, possession closing date. You will put it here, and then you would also put do an addendum, which would basically say you know hey, uh, sell buyer grant seller X amount of days to you know uh, exit the premises. Anything after this, uh, seller will be subject to $200 a day 
um, up to 30 days. You know, so you could say something like that, you know, so you may have to draft up a lease back if, um, you know, those types of special uh, cases or scenarios in which we can assist you and help you with that as well. All right. So you want your warranty deed. Uh, basically, what that states is you want to be able to get title insurance on the property. You want a clear, clean title uh, to ensure that, um, you know, like I said, that yeah, you can take full ownership of the property. In the event that there are liens on the property, you can require that the seller actually satisfies those liens before, or you can accept the property with the liens on there. All right. So All right. I'll tell you, I've accepted a property with a, a mechanics lien. And the mechanics lien was about $490. Uh, I accepted it because, hey, we couldn't find the actual person that did the work, you know? So for me, it's like, um, okay, well, go ahead. I'll take it, you know? And whenever I did it, so you can get the lien removed. Uh, certain, it, it all depends upon what that state laws is. So for that case there, hey, I had to do the, the lien amount plus 20% uh, at the courts so I could get a clean title. And hey, you leave it there for X amount of you know time, and if that contractor does, or the person that filed the lien does not come back and claim that that uh, those funds or petition you for it, you you can actually put in for reimbursement, get those funds back. Okay, so uh, title, as I said, your title attorney will be able to give you more information about that. See, it's not too hard. All right, let's see here. All right, buyer's right to deed property back to seller. So let's say if, um, you know, you purchased the property and um, down the road, you say, you know what? Hey, I don't want, want the property anymore. So you say, hey, you know, I have two, 24 months. 24 months, you know, I, I service this debt, I pay it. And then I decide, hey, I, I no longer want the actual property. Hey, I have up to 24 months. I'm sorry, two years to actually do that. After two years, then, hey, look, that's that's me saying, hey, I'm keeping that. You know, I'm keeping the debt. You know, I'm, I'm going to service it for until the loan is paid. All right. So from there, you have online access. Um, the online access is basically for cases to where um, you're able to pay the mortgage online. And so what you want to establish is you want to have access to go in and, you know, pay that debt online, uh, you know, see the mortgage balances, you know, see what type of uh, escrows that you have, uh, take a look at, you know, all your fees, print out your statements. So you want to have that access to, to the online portal. So here it states that, hey, you're you're uh, the sellers granting you access to the online uh, portal so you can actually go in and pay, pay the debt. So you have that, then you have addendum. So if you have any type of addendum that, you know, you add that in there. Additional terms, you know, if you have that, I just put in here, we buy as is, where he is, no repairs expected or implied. So I'm pretty simple and easy going. With sub twos, that's typically what I do. It's typically what I do. So you have uh, information about faxes, you know, you can, you know, uh, fax, um, you know, the banks, you can fax the, the sellers, you can fax the title companies, um, complete assignment. So you can actually assign, see, this is important here. You can assign this contract without the seller's consent. So here they're giving you permission to do that. You can uh, assign it. Yep. Uh oh, you can uh, assign it without the seller's consent. So it's completely up to you, all right? Let's see here. All right, then you got receipts acknowledgement. So it's pretty simple. You sign it, the seller sign it, and man, hey, look, then you move on. It's like very, very simple. Was there any questions about any of that information that was actually shared? Um, I do have a question about the inspection period. What's a good timeline for that? It's about a week, two weeks. What do you say for that? So with, with the inspection, man, uh, you can do it 
you know, 10 days is like industry norm, seven to 10 days. Mm -hmm. So, but typically if you're going to do a sub to, and you, you're going to already have met with the person, um, with the seller in person. So mm -hmm. you can do it in, you know, three days, you can do it in one day. You know, you should know already uh, by by the time that you present the offer, if it's going to work. Sub mm -hmm. twos are very, um, how can I say it? Uh, they're, they're very, hmm, trying to see how I can say it. Uh, they're, they're, like you really need an actual um, um, relationship with the people that you are working with. So you need one of those to where you can actually, you know, um, build trust and rapport. And so by the time you get through, you know, to the inspection period, you're going to already know the condition of the home. You're going to already feel comfortable with it. And remember, you know, if you back out, you're, you know, a risk of losing $10, you know, $5, whatever you put in there for your deposit. So you're not, you know, at risk of losing a lot of dollars, but, you also want to know, you know, before you do, um, um, you know, put everything together that, hey, look, I'm doing this deal. You know, I'm doing it. And so, yeah, because the seller, you know, most of the time they're, they're counting on you, you know, they're counting on you. So you want to remember that. You know, here's a page that I actually skipped and I figured I did. I knew it was some more information in there. So I had to go over here to the thumbnails. So you have certain things in here that the contract also gives you the ability to do like a marketable title, you want to make sure that, you know, you can actually market the property, you can get, you know, a free and clear uh, title of with any uh, of any liens. So you want to make sure are in comparisons, you want to make sure that you have that ability to do so in the event that uh, you can't or you choose not to, you want to know that, hey, okay, you're accepting the property uh, with these liens that are encumbrances on the property. Um, adjustments you want to you know have the ability to you know adjust any type of closing dates adjust any type of uh monies that's owed to the actual seller for instance let's say if they have here like unpaid uh interest or uh, utilities or uh you know sometimes uh the cities uh, the counties they're actually you know cut the grass you know things like that so it's giving you the ability to um you know go in and, and renegotiate those terms uh, you know with the seller so let's say if you agree to the seller hey i'm going to purchase the property for the mortgage payoff plus two thousand dollars but then you find out you have another um you know seventy five hundred dollars in liens and encumbrances so you want to go back in and maybe negotiate, you, you know, hey, get rid of that $2,000 and say, hey, I would love to give you the two grand. Unfortunately, this is everything that's on there. So we need to make some, some adjustments. So instead of two grand, you may get $500, you know, or you may not get anything based upon this. So you want to know that. Um, then you have information about, you know, defaults. So, you know, if, if the buyer fails to comply with the terms, or if, um, you know, the seller decides to, uh, you know, back out for whatever reason. So you want to know what happened. You want to be able to have that ironed out and lay it out clearly. And both parties agree to it. Uh, risk of loss and damages. So, you, you know, this here is it in the event something happens to the property and um, insurance company issues a payment and, you um, you you want to be you, you want to be the recipient of that actual uh, payment, and in the event that the damage is over five thousand dollars, you have the ability to back out of um, the actual agreement with no penalty if you sue you know see fit. All right, here's something that's sexy here. Assignment, like I said, you can assign this contract. All right, you're not a listing broker. All right. Memorandum of contract. This is one of the things that, you know, we we're adding into our A to B contracts, which is the memorandum of contract. Uh, this gives you the ability to go down to the uh, county uh, courthouse and file this memorandum on, with this contract attached, stating that you have an agreed purchase uh, of this property purchase agreement with of this property with the seller for this amount okay so what happens is if this someone comes behind you and offers the seller you know 
$20,000 plus mortgage payoff, the seller can accept, but with your mem memorandum of contract in place, they can't actually close out on the contract without you giving a contract release, okay? So you're able to negotiate, you know, a, a set somewhat of a penalty for your time that you've put into it. All right, property condition report. You know, so you can uh, add one of those in there, uh, equal housing rights. So all this stuff is here for you to actually go in and ensure that, you know, you can really go out and execute this subject to contract and have, you know, just about everything that you need to, you know, protect you as a buyer and a lot of things in place there to uh, assist a seller. So today we just went over the actual uh, purchase and sale agreement you know, doing the subject too. There's still some additional documents that you would actually use whenever you go to close, like uh, a do on sale clause, you would do that. Um, you would also do a, a seller's acknowledgement, you know, um, then you would do a limited power of attorney. So you would, it's still some additional, uh, you know, documents that needs to be, you know, signed. But right now, you don't have to sign those simply because, you know, you're just placing the property under contract right now. So, yeah. So, so did you have any questions about any of that information I've just shared with you? No, I do not. I was taking notes. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. So now all you, you just need is a copy of the contract for yourself. So you mm -hmm. can go in and fill out the information and then you can, you know, share it with the seller and move forward. Correct. Excellent, excellent. So uh, I think I saw the video of the property. And so mm -hmm. as I shared with you the other day, what you wanna know because that property needs some work, um, I know you have the cheat sheet of what the renovation should be. So make sure that you get the ARV, you get your renovation cost, you get the balance of the loan, okay? ARV, renovation cost, balance of the loan. Yeah, I got the ARV. Um, that mortgage. Let me see. Because uh, we discussed that the ARV was around 105 to 115. <clears throat> and then the remaining balance of, of the loan. I think I sent that to you. That's going to be that mortgage yeah. statement, correct? Right? Yep, you did. You did send it to me. So now, yeah, it's just really, you know, taking a look at seeing what your renovations are going to be. So you want to, you know, since you're not too familiar with what the actual cost is now, so you would, you know, just hire a local contractor and or, you know, or, yeah, hire or ask a local contractor to go to the property and to give you an, an actual bid. So whenever you, you get a bid, you also want to provide to them a scope of work. So what you would like to actually do in the home, right? So you're probably going to need to be there with them um, to go through it with them because certain things like um, you may not want to remove those tile ceiling pieces, right? You may want to leave them there and just paint them and which I would. So because this property here is an excellent rental property, I, I don't think it's a, a you know, um, a great flip, but an excellent rental property. OK, right. So and if you're going to, like I said, do it as a rental property here, well, let's see here how, how we do our numbers here. Let's see here. Pull up my calculator. Because I was writing down some of the, uh, you know, the renovations and everything. Like I said, uh, I know it needs a window. The window in the back is busted out. Um, so I know it needs like a, a new window. So, um, so the ARV is 110, right? Uh, roughly 110,000. We'll go right there in the middle. Yeah, correct. So let's see here. 0.75 would be the highest we would like to be. So it's $82,000, $500. Do you remember roundabout what that, um, the mortgage balance is on that property? I think that mortgage balance was like, yeah, estimate would be fine. You don't have to be exact. Because it says the outstanding principal, 41,000. Okay. 
So let's just say 41,000. That leaves you with, uh oh, yeah. So roughly 30, uh, $32,000 to get that property together. Now, $32,000 to get the property together if you, you know, would like to do that transaction in, in the form of a burr, right? You buy it, uh, you renovate it, you rent it, then you refinance the property out. So yeah, so so you want to see if you can get that house done for about thirty thousand, right? So yeah, and so you know, and you can disclose that number to your actual contractor, or you may decide not to. And just remember that we're here to assist you whenever it comes with you know um, helping select labor as well as helping you select material that will keep you on budget. Sounds good. So I got a quick question about that tile. So you said the tile, you just paint over it? Like, is that something you have to like mud and then tape? Like, did they do that before? No, the tile, which is in the ceiling, is mm -hmm. that, that's what I was referring to. So, so no, you would just, um, the painter, the contractor, they would just take a, a sprayer and they would paint that tile. Okay. So yeah, so, and just, so the lines would still be there, but they could just paint and just give it a, a fresh coat and, and a fresh look and feel. Okay. Right. And you you would do that in, in a case like this because you know, you're tight on budget. Uh, you know, the property will be a rental property. It suits and fits that neighborhood. Uh, it's a house, you know, it's a three bed. Uh, I think it was three bed, one bath or three bed, two bath. One bath. Three bed, one bath in an area where it's not, uh, you know, many opportunities for, you know, decent properties. So you, you would be in, in prime position to be able to lease out that property without doing too much. Sounds great. Excellent, man. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped up for you, man. I'm excited for you. Um, you know, in this case here, because the property is going through a pre foreclosure, you want to, you know, move as quickly as you possibly can, uh, simply because you don't want, uh, you know, time to run out or, you know, fees to continue to add up. Let me ask you this here. Is there a, an actual auction date set yet? Uh, no, there's no auction date. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. You, you're in great shape, man. You're in great, great shape. So it's not even thing I, I would need to, you know, go into to too much uh, more information right now. So cool, man. Well, hey, yeah, let's just, you, you know, uh, get the contract, download the contract from the Google Drive, go ahead and fill it out. If you have any questions, you know, shoot us a text, uh, an email or pick up the phone, give me a call and I'll walk you through it and, you know, we'll continue to move forward. Sounds good. I'm going to um, download the contract right now fill it okay. out, and then um, I'm going to send it out to you, you know, just to go over everything to make sure everything was correct. Great. You know, send it out to the buyer. Great, 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 man. Yeah. Keep going, brother. We're proud of you, man. Excited for you. Absolutely, man. You take care. Enjoy the rest of the uh the weekend. You too. Appreciate it. Later.